Hello and welcome to the first video for topic two, computer organizations. And this time we're going to be outlining the architecture of the CPU and the functions of the ALU, the CU and the registers within the CPU. This is for the IB diploma in computer science. As you can see, we're in topic two, part of the four core units. So here we go. I think it's the longest title in the syllabus, but according to the guided learning hours, it's a short topic of six hours. Okay, so by the end of the presentation, you will be able to outline the architecture of the CPU, including the ALU, the CU, and the registers, describe the functions of the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, and the control unit within the CPU, explain the role of registers within the CPU, specifically the memory address register, which is the MAR, and the MDR, the memory data register. You should be able to reproduce a block diagram that shows the relationship between the CPU, input and output devices, and storage. We need to understand how the CPU processes instructions using its various components. Okay, so quite complex this video, but we'll take it nice and steady. So, first of all, we've got our computer. The computer can connect a numerous input devices, numerous output devices. We've got the RAM inside the memory. We've got hard disk drives, SSD drives, okay, media storage. But all of this is controlled in some way by the CPU. Well, what is the CPU? The, C the central processing unit, the CPU, also known as the microprocessor or the processor, is central to all modern computer systems, including tablets, smartphones, yeah, anything that's sort of computer controlled we will have some kind of CPU inside it. The CPU is very often installed as an integrated circuit on a single microchip. Okay, the CPU has the responsibility for the execution or processing of all the instructions and data in a computer application. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, to give you a bit of history, Von Neumann, you may have seen this, certainly if, you, if you've done IGCSEs before, you might be familiar with Von Neumann architecture. Early computers were fed data while the machines were actually running. It wasn't possible to store programs or data, which meant they couldn't operate without considerable human intervention. But in the mid-1940s, John von Neumann developed the concept of the stored program computer, which has been the basis of computer architecture ever since. The von Neumann architecture has the following main features. The concept of a central processing unit, the CPU, the CPU was able to accept the memory directly. Computer memories could store programs as well as data. Stored programs were made up of instructions which could be executed in sequential order. Okay, von Neumann architecture. So let's have a little look inside a CPU. We've got a schematic model here. We've got the control unit, arithmetic logic unit, and we've got registers and buses. We've also got um, a system clock. The clock sends out a regular electronic pulse, which synchronizes, keeps in time all of the components. Okay, the frequency of the pulses is known as a clock speed. This is a term you may have heard of. Clock speed is measured in hertz. The higher the frequency, the more instructions can be performed at any given moment in time. Now, in the mid sort of 1980s, processors commonly ran at the rate of about three megahertz to five megahertz which is sort of 3 million to 5 million pulses or cycles per second. Today's technology processes commonly run at a rate of um, 3 to 5 gigahertz, which is 3 billion to 5 billion pulses. And this is obviously growing by the year as well. How does it work? We have files stored on our hard disk or on our solid state drive. Now the CPU takes data and programs held on the hard drives, on the hard disk drive, and puts them into RAM memory. Okay, temporarily. This is done because read-write operations carried out using the RAM are considerably faster than read-writing operations back to the hard disk drive. Consequently, any key data needed by an application will be stored temporarily in RAM to considerably speed up the operation. Okay, so there we go. RAM holds all the data and programs needed to be accessed by the CPU at any one time. Okay, so we've got the control unit. The control unit reads an instruction from memory. The address of the location where the instruction can be found is stored in the program counter, the PC. This instruction is then interpreted using the fetch, decode, execute cycle. You may have heard of this as well. During that process, signals are generated along the control bus to tell the other components in the computer what to do. The control unit ensures synchronization of data flow and program instructions throughout the computer. So arithmetic and logic unit, 
allows the required arithmetic, e.g. pluses and minuses and shifting, which again, you may have done some binary shifting at IGCSE, or logic, e.g. the AND gates, the OR gates, the NOT gates, operations to be carried out while a program is being run. It is possible for a computer to have more than one ALU to carry out specific functions. These are known as a cause, the ALU. So multiple cores in a computer basically means it's got multiple arithmetic logic units. Okay, so a quad-core computer has got four ALUs. It means you can do a lot more in terms of multitasking. Multiplication and divisions are carried out by a sequence of addition and subtraction and left or right logical shift operations, which again we'll come to later on when we talk about binary in this chapter. And we've got the registers. Okay, registers are small amounts of high-speed memory contained within the CPU. They're used by the processor to store small amounts of data that are needed during processing, such as the address of the next instruction to be executed, the current instruction being decoded, and the results of the calculations. So here we go, we've got the CIR, the current instruction register, and this register stores the current instruction being decoded and executed by the CPU. The accumulator, the ACC, this register is used when carrying out ALU calculations. It stores data temporarily during the calculations. The memory address register, the MAR, this registers stores the address of the memory location currently being read from or written to. And then the MDR, the memory data register or the buffer register, this register stores data which has just been read from memory or data which is about to be written to memory. Okay, these two are the ones you need to know for the IB syllabus, the MAR and the MDR. The other three are not particularly important. Okay, but if you know them, it is beneficial, especially if you've got a long question on an exam paper. The program counter or the PC, this register stores the address where the next instruction to be read can be found. Okay, so how does this work? Well, here we go. We've got these, we've got buses that sort of take the data, take the address of where the data lives and the control bus. These are all connected to the CPU. The CPU obviously talks to the memory, the RAM in this case, or it's maybe talking to cache if it's you running it down the address bus. And this again talks to the ports on the motherboard, which connect our inputs and outputs. Okay, so all this information, if it's not running inside the CPU, it might be running to other circuitry on the motherboard. Certainly there's say the memory and the ports where things are connected. So we've got the address bus, we've got the data bus, and we've got the control bus. Now the control bus, carries control signals from the processor to other components. The control bus also carries the clock's pulses to make sure everything's in time. The data bus, this carries the actual data between the processor and other components. Now the address bus carries the memory addresses from the processor to other components such as primary memory and inputs and outputs. It's basically telling us where the data can be found. Okay, and more about that in a moment. Okay, I just want to simplify this down a little bit further. So, so if we take the original schematic of the CPU, let's spin that around and send it out of the way, and we change it to just a little simple block diagram. Okay, so we can see MAR, MDR, the control unit, the arithmetic and logic unit, other registers, and the I.O. controllers. If we leave it like that, but we add in the cache and the different buses and the um, primary memory of the RAM, and then we can see we've also got the output devices, the input devices, and the storage. If you can save this to memory, because as you're aware, part of the syllabus does say you need to be able to produce a block diagram. So this is the sort of thing we're looking for. So how does this work? I've got a little diagram here. The computer memory is made up of a number of partitions. Let's sort of see here. Each partition consists of an address and its contents. The table shown uses eight bits for each address and eight bits for the content. In real computer memory, the address and its contents are actually much, much, much bigger than this, much bigger. Okay, we're talking millions, billions, trillions, okay, of zeros and ones. The address, which uniquely identifies every location in the memory, and the contents will be the binary values stored in each location. Okay, so we've got the address, where the data lives, and of course, we've got the data. Okay, let us now consider two examples of how the MAR and the MDR registers can be used when carrying out a read and write operation to and from memory. First, consider the read operation. We will use the memory section shown in the table. Okay, suppose we want to read the contents of memory location 111001. The two registers are used as follows. Okay, we've got the MAR, the address, 
the address of location 11110001 to be read from is first written into the MAR, okay? As you can see here, a read signal is sent to the computer's memory. The contents of the memory location, yeah, this here, are then put in the MDR, okay, the data register. Of course, this is running through buses and it's running at lightning speed. Now, the write operation, yeah, again, we're using the memory section shown in the table. Suppose this time we want to show how the value, here we go, how this value here in the contents was written to memory location, this one. This data has to be written into location with the address 11111101. So this address is now written into the MAR. Finally, a write signal is sent to the computer memory and the value, okay, this value here, will then be written into the correct memory location. Okay, but all this is happening continuously and at lightning speeds whenever we're working on a task which involves the CPU, which really is everything when we're using our computer. So to summarize, in this presentation, we explore the architecture of the central processing unit, CPU, focusing on the essential components, the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, and registers, including the MAR and the MDR. We discussed how the ALU performed mathematical and logical operations, and that multiple ALUs, okay, are known as the cores. So if we've got a multi-core processor, we've got multiple ALUs performing different tasks, but at the same time, while the control unit manages the flow of instructions within the CPU. The role of registers in storing and transferring data was also highlighted and mentioned with particular emphasis on the MAR and MDR. This is what you need to know in terms of the IB. Finally, we examined a block diagram that illustrates the relationship between the CPU, input and output devices, and storage, providing a clear picture of how the CPU processes and executes instructions. Okay, as always, I've got three questions. Okay, first of all, for two marks, what is the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit? And B, what is the control unit? Number two, describe the role of memory address registers, MAR, and the memory data register within the CPU. And question three, for six marks, explain the architecture of the CPU and how the ALU, CU, and the registers work together to execute instructions. Include the role of the MAR and MDR in your explanation. So, as always, if you want to have a little go at these before I show you the answers, please pause the video. Otherwise, here we go. Arithmetic logic unit, the ALU is responsible for performing arithmetic and logical operations such as addition, subtraction, and comparisons. Okay. Control unit, CU. The CU directs the operations of the CPU by interpreting instructions from memory and controlling the flow of data between the CPU and other components. Question two, memory address register. The MAR holds the address of the memory location that the CPU is accessing, either for fetching data or for storing data. Okay, whereas the MDR temporarily holds data that is being transferred to or from memory. Okay, when the CPU reads from or writes to memory, the MDR holds the data being transferred. And finally, the CPU consists of the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, and various registers. The ALU handles all of the arithmetic and logical operations, while the CU manages the flow of data and instructions by interpreting and executing them. The CPU uses registers like the MAR and the MDR to communicate with memory. The MAR holds the memory address of data to be accessed, and the MDR holds the actual data being transferred to or from that address. Together, these components allow the CPU to fetch instructions, process the data, and then execute commands efficiently, which is all part of the fetch, decode, and execute cycle. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope that's a little bit clearer for you. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.